personalization is here to stay, and Magnolia makes it easier than ever. Magnolia supports personalization out of the box. Check this video to see how easy it is to define personas and segments and use traits such as date, country, visitor, or cookie to apply personalization. We don't hesitate to use additional tools from the outside too. Finally, we'll show you an example of using external personalization. Hello and welcome. Let's talk a little bit about personalization with Magnolia. For that, I'm going to log in as a power editor. All right. So, if it comes to personalization, it's always important to keep in mind that there are all kinds of different tactics and strategies that can be used to personalize content. So, let's have a look on each and every one of those. Well, what we have seen already in the past was that we have a lot of different components and we have seen the green bars and we have seen our editing capabilities. Okay, what we haven't spoken yet about is actually um, that you can personalize each and every element that is available in Magnolia. And that goes like that. I can just select, let's say here, that card that we created before. And I can create a variant of that. So I'm going to create now this component variant. And, well, obviously, this is what we see here already. We have now a variant, but obviously the content is absolutely the same. Let's change that. So I'm going to hit edit. So again, we have here then the content capturing um, piece of, of this new variant. So let's change to a new um, image. Let's say we want to um, create content for, let's see, um, campaign images. Mm, yeah, let's create a campaign for shopping. So now we have here new different images and um, um, shop. Now with us, new merch in store. All right, okay, so we created now a complete different piece of content here. Okay, that's good, but now we just have another variant for that um, slot here, but still, obviously, the system has no idea who should actually um, receive this variant. And for that, we have to choose an audience. So I'm going to choose an audience. Um, this is our merge variant. Okay. What I do under normal circumstances, I'm just going to select a ready-made segment from Magnolia. But to explain how segments are actually managed in Magnolia, um, let's go one step deeper because each and every segment basically um, consists of multiple traits. And maybe you're asking, you know, hmm, what's a trait? Imagine it like this. So each and every single request that goes to Magnolia um, will be analyzed by our trait framework. So imagine a trait like really a small antenna. And this small antenna is going to analyze the incoming request for certain um, properties, characteristics, and if there's a match, then this trait will say, yes, vote um, that request, that's a match for me. And each and every single segment consists of multiple traits. To start small, let's just do it with one trait. So what we have here is just um, our out-of-the-box um, standard traits that are delivered with Magnolia. So what you can use is you can just do it on the visitor status. So it's just a brand new user, it's a returning user, is that user maybe even logged in. Maybe if there's a certain cookie um, available, then we can just use this as a signal. User group, so if a user is actually logged in, then we can just um, say, okay, this logged in user is in a certain group, therefore it's a match. Um, 
a Google UTM campaign, for example. That just means if on Google someone clicks on a paid ad, then based on this identifier, we can just um, deliver the matching variant. So country filter, so we can just detect from which country you're actually from. Then based on this, you can personalize user journey scoring. It's also very interesting. So basically, if you just think back to our categories, you can just start to tag all the content, all the products, and then each click on such a content piece will just increase a virtual score. But it's just indicating interest for a certain product or service. Once a certain threshold is reached, then that would just say, well, then that would just count as a yes from that trade. Or you could also just personalize on a date. Just to keep it simple, let's go with this um, Google UTM trade. So let's say we have some kind of campaign actually, um, some paid advertising on Google. So if someone comes in with, a, I just make some ID up, uh, one, two, three, UTM campaign. So if someone comes in with this identifier, then this variant should be actually delivered. Okay, save changes. And now we have it. We have basically a variant and we have um, some kind of identifier to um, tell the system who should basically see um, this variant. Well, we have seen already that we have the page by itself. We have seen the campaign manager. I'm just going to introduce a timeline. So we have already two dimensional content. What we've done now is we also just changed the behavior based on certain um, segments. And that means we have three dimensional content. For that, we need some kind of preview to understand what's really going on on this page. And for that, let's go back to the preview page and then we're going to preview as a visitor. We have seen this here already, the time zone. So or the time timestamp to just get dynamic campaigns. What I do under normal circumstances, a set with the segments, you're just going to use a ready-made segment to, for, the pull, uh, for the full preview. In this case, um, we just went with a trade. So let's stick with that. Um, so what's, what's going to happen if someone is going to come with a UTM campaign? Pick, and now I'm just going to use here this identifier. And as you can see, in the preview, this would be then the variant that would be delivered. And as I said, you can obviously combine this also with different timestamps to see what kind of combination from personalized content plus campaigns you really have. All right, let's now, let's talk a little bit about a real world scenario. As you can, <clears throat> as you can imagine, you won't just go to um, each, and, uh, each and every variant and just manually um, set up a trade. That wouldn't scale. Therefore, we have here the um, Segments app. And this is where you pre-create uh, pre your different segments. So if I go, for example, with this one, then we have, again, a name, a description for the team to understand what that segment really does, what it's really targeting. And then you can just basically combine here your different um, traits. One thing also very important to mention is, well, what about external data? Well, let's say you have a CRM or a CDP platform and you want to leverage this for personalization. Well, what you do in this case is you're just going to create here your own trait. And this trait of yours is then going to speak with a system like, let's say, Dynamics or Marketo or whatever it might be, or even a total custom data lake to get additional intel from your um, external satellite systems. So that's one way of doing it. Or you could also just use ready-made segments from other systems and then just sync those into Magnolia. That's another way that allow you to basically use um, external personalization data as well. Just to uh, make it really clear. So what I've done here in the demo case that we have seen is that the segments part, I basically um, created a single, or used a single trait. In um, reality, you're just going to, if you choose your audience, you're not going to work with traits most of the time, a few exceptions. What you're going to do is you are going to use a ready-made segment. Okay, well, that's only one level of personalization. Um, so, 
a typical scenario. <clears throat> you're going to um, create variants, especially for um, campaigns and then also for full product groups. That's one thing. Um, one type of personalization, that's your typical product recommender, your typical product carousel. And for that, Magnolia um, typically uses an external solution for product recommendations. So let's have a look on how that looks like. So if I'm going to preview the page here, then let's go to that product here on sale. So we have here on this page some content set up in Magnolia. There's all the product data coming from uh, the PIM or from the e-commerce system. That part here, that's basically our product recommender. And how is that working? Do I also have to create a trade here and then just handpick all the different products? Well, obviously not because that would not work if you have like hundreds or tens of thousands of products in your catalog. And for that, um, external recommendation solutions come into play. Let's have a look. So if I go to the template that is used to render all my uh, product detail pages, um, then it looks like that. I have here my product detail page and that's the same thing. We've seen this here, that is a uh, Magnolia banner. So that's a placeholder for the products from the e-commerce system. And here we have basically our recommender. And the recommender is nothing else than just one component that can be basically placed everywhere based on the template definition. So for example here, um, my template definition for this product template allows me to place a recommender. In this case, we just connect to attract. And then as an editor, you just have a few options that allow you to hook into this um, recommendation system like um, Algolia, Attract, whatever it might be. And you can still decide what kind of strategy and tactic for product recommendations should be really used. And um, as you can imagine, um, this obviously also as an editor allows you to try out many different things on many different places with different recommendation algorithms, with campaigns, plus with the personalization capabilities that we have seen in Magnolia. And um, one thing that I cannot stress enough if we talk about recommendations, well, here we just see recommendations based on products. You can do the very same thing also with Magnolia scoring model um, with your content pool. I mean, we have seen those texts before and if you have a good taxonomy for your different um, product, service, content categories, then you can also use um, content that is tagged to basically propose the right content at the right place. Really, to make it a little bit more visual, think about a newspaper. Well, we just read an article and magically you just see the sections, people that are reading this are also interested in that. This is basically then in the Magnolia world, the very same thing like the recommendation capabilities that we have seen, in combination with a very good tagged content pool. And that concludes our overview on Magnolia's personalization capabilities. Thank you and see you in the next one.